Hey everyone, I'm Johnny and today we're taking a look at some of our favorite World War II tank movie classics from the 60s through to the 80s. Many of these movies remain some of the best World War II movies to date, but finding props, especially authentic tanks, was not always easy. You'll get an education in about 10 seconds. Well, they get a dose of that artillery fire. Pull up. We got brass on our tail. Take it. Pull it forward, you idiot. <laughs> Drop dead. Pull it forward, you idiot. 1965, Battle of the Bulge. A fun movie, but probably the most historically inaccurate on the list, so much so that even Dwight Eisenhower denounced it. The film loosely follows the battle of its title. Battle of the Bulge was filmed in Spain, therefore the production team painted numerous Spanish M47 patent tanks to represent, though not really, German Tiger tanks. The M47 was an American tank, used around the world by Allied countries, which began production in 1951 six years after World War II. The Allies in the Battle of the Bulge can be seen using real 1944 Cadillac M24 Chaffee light tanks seeing service in late World War II onwards. Spain actually used Chaffee tanks against Moroccan forces in Western Africa in the 1950s. You can also find an American 1944 M3 half-track dressed up as a German half-track. Oh. oh, wow. Disaster. Oh. Solid. Enemy column! Tanked! 1967 Tobruk, set in North Africa, loosely follows Operation Agreement, a behind-the-lines operation to disrupt access supplies. This time the Allies are facing both the Italians and Rommel's Africa Corps, commanding the powerful Cold War, this time M48 Patton tank, in North Africa. This movie is also filmed in Spain, and these are Spanish Army M48s. You can also find an M3 and M2 half-track, dressed up to look like a German Hanno mag. Kind of, I guess. You know, when you come to think of it, Brixton Prison's really a nice place. You're getting soft in the conk, Alfie. Walls, eh? In Deutsch, huh? Silence or you're dead. Still order du bist tot. Still order du bist tot. Still, still order du bist tot. 1968, The Devil's Brigade follows a joint American-Canadian commando unit in the Italian campaign. Again, no lack of love for the Spanish Army's Chrysler M47 Patton, produced at the Detroit Arsenal Tank Plant, an American locomotive company. The tank scenes in this movie are brief, but enjoyable. Nineteen sixty nine, The Bridge at Remagen. Overall great movie for its time, it loosely follows the events of the capture of the Ludendorff Bridge at the end of the war by the Ninth Armored Division. This is probably the most interesting tank movie from a production point of view. The movie uses numerous World War II M twenty four Chaffees, an American M three half track, and it was filmed in Czechoslovakia, so a Czech licensed and produced German half track was also available. The most interesting part of this movie was that it was filmed during political instability in Czechoslovakia, and the Soviet Union actually accused the production company of smuggling weapons and armor into the country as part of an elaborate CIA ruse. In August of 1968, the movie was nearing completion when the Soviet army entered, or invaded, depends who you ask, Czechoslovakia, and the production team had to pack up and leave eight tanks behind, with the rest of the filming being done in Germany and Italy. Yeah, yeah, come on! 1970, Patton, one of the most iconic World War II movies ever produced, about one of World War II's most recognizable generals. Ironically, Patton would be facing off against American, German-painted M48 Patton tanks, named after himself, of course. But this time, the production company gave Patton and the Allies some futuristic tanks as well. Patton was armed primarily in this movie with post-war M41 Walker Bulldogs a capable light tank that replaced the Chaffee, and a few M48 Pattons of his own. Patton also has an M37 105mm howitzer motor carriage, not used until Korea, and a 1953 Massey-Harris M44 
155 mm self-propelled howitzer. Patton was also filmed in Spain, with the Spanish happy to rent out their tanks, to Hollywood producers. Notably, it's the British in this movie who are the only nation to get period tanks, driving Cadillac M24 Chaffees. <laughs> okay, I'll drink to that. Okay, it looks like we got some sort of military installation up ahead, so make it the same deal as before. We're going to a triangular formation. I'll go down the slot. 1970, Kelly's Heroes, everyone's favorite classic tank movie. This production was actually filmed in Yugoslavia, a nation which possessed several post-war model M4A3 Sherman tanks still in service. The cast and production team of Kelly's Heroes were keen on historical accuracy, much to the benefit of the viewers, as we finally get to see some decent attempts at actual German armor mock-ups. The production team acquired three T-34s. They were able to make into, what was for the time, very convincing Tiger and mock-ups. Good job, Kelly's Heroes. Oh, man. I only ride them. I don't know what makes them work. Huh? How the hell do they expect us to keep the schedule on a road like this? You don't know the worst. This bit we're on now, yes? The wide part. 1977, A Bridge Too Far, a massive epic based on the failed Market Garden operation with probably one of the best casts the movie could ever ask for. There are a lot of tanks in this movie and it was filmed in the Netherlands to retain authenticity. The movie did a decent job at tank authenticity as well. For real tanks we have four period Shermans with a few mock-ups in the foreground. There are authentic Bren gun carriers, a Daimler armored car, M5 half tracks. You'll find a few M47 patents here and there, trying to add to the impressive tank bulk in a few scenes. There are a few okay attempts at mock up German armored cars, and one funky looking Leopard 1 trying to either look like a Panzer IV or possibly a Panther. Either way, excellent film all round. Jeez. 1980, The Big Red One, a well-received movie based on director Samuel Fuller's own experiences. The movie covers events from the Kasserine Pass in North Africa right into the invasion of Germany. This is a unique film as it was produced independently on a low budget and shot in Israel. So of course we get some Israeli modified M51 Super Shermans with their massive French 105mm guns made particularly distinct because of their double baffle muzzle brake. I've heard of Germans capturing Allied tanks before but this would certainly be a good find for any German tank crew, though very ironic to see Germans in Israeli modified Shermans. This movie also features one of the most unique and odd World War II tank movie scenes. Hopefully this baby grew up to be a tanker. <laughs> All right, I'm Johnny, thanks for watching. If you wanna support the channel, please like and subscribe. Or if you want to add any information about the movies discussed, please do so in the comment section below.